What's up everyone and welcome to part 3 in the series of how to get good at using Procreate. On this part we're going to be covering brushes. Alright, so let's get right into it. So tap with four fingers to reveal the interface. And now we're going to tap on this icon right here, which is the brush icon. So we tap on that and we can see all of the brushes that are available at our disposal. So on the right, we have the brushes themselves. And then on the left, we have the folders that these brushes are in. So if we tap on another folder, we can see the brushes that are in that folder. Now we can move brushes around simply by tapping and dragging them into another folder like this. And now we see the nickel roll is in another folder and we can just drag it back to the folder that it was originally in. So it's a very nice way to move brushes back and forth between folders and rearranging them. So this also works if you're moving brushes from Procreate to another program. If you have a brush inside Procreate, you can drag it to, for example, Dropbox or the iCloud account simply by tapping on it and then dragging it into iCloud just like that. And now we have created a brush backup. And this also works in the opposite direction. So you can take a brush from iCloud and then drop it into Procreate. And now we've imported Nico Roll back into Procreate. But since we already have it, I'm just gonna delete it. Now this can be extremely useful if you're, for example, downloading a brush from Dropbox or some other service like that. Let's take a look at how to import a brush from Dropbox. Now, in order to import a brush from Dropbox, we need a Dropbox link. And for that, we're gonna head to the Procreate forums. I'll leave a link in the description and also on the screen right here. So I dragged in the Chrome window and I'm just gonna resize it so that we can see the full page, just like so. And the way to resize these is by simply dragging on these white markers over here. So now we're in the Procreate forums and we wanna search for a brush that we wanna use in Procreate. So, I don't know, let's, Let's try this one out here, free stippling. So this looks like a kind of a shading effect. Now there's a Dropbox link here, so we can tap on that and that should open up Dropbox. And now we see it's loading and no preview available. No, that's okay, because we're gonna tap on this icon over here and then we're gonna select export, open in, and then we're simply gonna find Procreate. And once we tap on that, we've now imported the brush into Procreate. It's that simple. So now we have the brush in Procreate and we can simply drag this out of the way and select the brush. So now we can start painting with the brush that we downloaded from the forums page by using the Dropbox link that was shown on the screen. All right, so let's continue on with the brush interface. So let's go back here. And as I said, these are the folders that the brushes live in. Now, if you want to make a new folder, what you do is you drag down just like this and you see new set. So we tap on new set and we can give it a name, name it something like favorites. So here we can store all our favorite brushes that we use on a regular basis. So we can just drag the brushes into this folder and we have a neat organization of all our favorite brushes. So we can just take small stippling, the one that we downloaded, and move it into our favorites since we're going to be using this all of the time. Now let's say that you want to share a brush with someone else on the forums or through Messenger or something like that. What you do is you simply swipe to the left over here and then you tap on share. And there we can see all of the different options that we have to share our brush with. So we can send it through Messenger, through email, through Dropbox, or whatever you want. You can save it to the files, save it to the iCloud. A lot of possibilities here. Now, another thing that you can do with the quick options is to duplicate the brush. So this can be very helpful if you want to, for example, make changes to the brush. So you can duplicate it and then go into the brush and make whatever changes that you want to the brush without having to worry about ruining the original brush. So make whatever changes and then simply, if you don't like it, delete the brush. Make another duplicate and do it again. All right, so let's take a brush that comes with a program, something like this one over here. So we make a duplicate of that, then we move it into the favorites, and then we can change the way that the brush behaves. 
We do that by tapping on the brush to go into the brush settings. So now we can customize pretty much the entire experience of using the brush. So we can change things like the spacing between the brush strokes. We can change jitter, so make it go more random like this. Or we can move it to the opposite direction and have it smooth like this. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about what all of these brush settings do in this video. If you want to learn more about how to customize your brush, check out this video right here where I talk about what all of these settings do in detail. Now let's recap what we learned in the first video. So this one over here changes the brush size, make it bigger or make it smaller. This one changes the brush opacity, make it fainter or make it stronger. And if you have the Apple Pencil, you can have it so when you draw lightly, it creates light strokes. When you press down on it, it goes and makes thick and strong strokes. So doing light strokes can be very helpful if you're doing some shading work, maybe adding some highlights here and there. So it can be very helpful if you just want to lay down one thin layer of paint or digital paint at a time on the canvas and slowly build up the artwork to make something awesome. And now the final thing that I want to mention here is that the smudge tool and the eraser tool basically work the exact same as the brush. So you have the access to the exact same brushes for the smudge tool and for the eraser tool. So this can be very helpful if you want to maybe erase in a particular way. If you want to make a texture, you can just paint over the entire canvas and slowly erase information to form a texture. It's kind of an interesting process, but it's kind of cool that you can actually do this sort of thing in Procreate. At any rate, I want to thank you all very much for watching this video. If you want to check out the next video in this series where I'm going to be talking about colors, click on this one over here. Click on here to see another video from mine. Click here to subscribe to the channel. And I want to give big thanks to all of you who have subscribed. It's great to see how many people are passionate about learning and growing as digital artists. It's absolutely amazing. And if this video helped you out, leave a thumbs up on this video. It really helps me out. At any rate, I want to thank you all very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.